<laughs> one of her friends found that her partner, her boyfriend, followed Sydney Sweeney on both his personal account and his work account. <laughs> he was an optician and he was following her. He just wants to see her even better. Hello and welcome to Talk of the Townsends, a show about achieving incredible wealth, finding inner peace, mainly just about like chatting and TV and stuff like that. I'm Benedict Townsend. And I am Hannah Townsend. Hannah Townsend, how are you? It's great to be back. I forgot that we had an intro. I forgot that we had a podcast. We've left <laughs> it so long. We took a two month extended break. Yeah, we took time away. We, we stepped away from social media <laughs> for, for, for our mental health. We found ourselves. We found ourselves and now we're back with more nonsense. And I'm excited. I'm excited to there be were here. Ones of people who were like, bring that show back. I know. That actually, it made me so happy that anyone who sent a message saying, what happened to that podcast? Yeah. Very kind. So those three people, thank you very much. That you're the reason that we're here. And should we address the elephant in the room? Yes. Well, the elephant is the room, <laughs> so to speak. And we're back and we're on fire. <laughs> uh, we are in a different podcast studio than before. This is uh, basically a shipping container. Yeah. Kind of a place you'd bring someone to kind of do an enhanced interrogation, I guess you could say. Yeah. Or a podcast, arguably <laughs> kind of the same thing. Either A or B. It, it's like that shipping container from, what was the show where she went in and never went out? Well, that was a true crime thing, so it's maybe <laughs> a little really, heavy, but... <laughs> that was really good. That was very good. Um, yeah, our podcast studio 1.0, the timings that they could give us to film were like 7 a.m. on a Tuesday morning. We still we still like them, they're still good people. Oh, I know yeah. everyone is wrapped up in this. this is, <laughs> it's been on everyone's lips, but on every front page of the newspapers, but we're addressing it now. We're addressing the allegations. The rumours. <laughs> the the rumours of a new studio. <laughs> the people who are listening to this audio only are just like... Get on with it. Get on with My it. My friend, that's what the 30 second skip button is for. We went to, I want to bring this up to begin with. We went to Disneyland Paris. Ah. For your, thir <laughs> for, your <laughs> for those listening, that noise was, <laughs> uh, we went for your 30th birthday. Yeah, is this like a catch up? What have we been doing? Yeah, we've been up to all sorts. We've been, we've been abroad. Yeah. Um, we went for your 30th birthday. We First time we've been since we were both kids. We did, yeah. The magic was still alive. The kingdom was was giving it was giving magic. Mickey didn't look a day older. He didn't. He didn't. I <laughs> uh, looked a little smaller than I remembered him. <laughs> um, but we had a nice time, and we had a few a few little incidents yeah. um, that popped up. Well, first of all, the thing that was really amusing me is that um, when you go to Disneyland Paris, you can go on the train. But of course, in the most Parisian thing of all time, the stop is not called Disneyland. Disneyland. Well, first of all, it goes Disneyland, Disneyland, which is so fun to say. We spent the whole trip just going Disneyland. Disneyland. I was like, I never would have guessed that's how they say that. But it's called like, you know, Paris or Lee, da 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 da. Uh -huh. But it's just Disneyland. Yeah. But you can tell the French were like, we're not going to call it Disneyland. That's insulting. They're like, only if you solve the clues of where it is, yeah. you get to go. You we get to see the mouse. <laughs> we the refused mice. to be helpful for one second. They were like, it is not Disneyland. It's Paris Orly. Da, 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 da. It's like, cool. What's there? Oh, Disneyland's there. Yeah. yeah, just Disneyland. Disneyland. But obviously we were there with a lot of families and yeah. a lot of kids. Not our families. No. Well, we were there with each other. We are family. <laughs> And I've got all my sisters with me. And we went on um, some rides. And obviously rides can be scary for kids. Rides can be scary for kids. And there was one, there was a specific ride. Was it the Haunted Mansion? It was the Haunted Mansion, yes. And we queued for, the problem, here's the thing. Here's your tactics if you're going to Disneyland, right? Disneyland. Disneyland. If you're not going with kids, you can go, a lot of the rides have this thing called single rider mm. where um, you have to be like, kids under 12 have to be accompanied by an adult on a ride so the lines are usually really short and they just like send you on a ride by yourself yeah. right you can queue together but you have to go on the ride alone is the thing i saw the funny thing we were going into one of the rides was it the ratatouille, it was the ratatouille ride the ratatouille ride and this guy he was there with his child and he was like on we go to the single rider son and the worker was like oh um how old is you know the boy and he was like oh he's 14 and the boy was like I'm not 14. And, I, <laughs> and he was like nudging me like, yes, you are. He was like, yeah, you are. He was like, I'm not 14. And then I'm 12. <laughs> uh, and the guy was like, well, I'm sorry, I can't let you on. Because it was like 14 was the minimum or something. Yeah. So your best bet is not going with kids so that you can get on single riders quickly. <laughs> your best tactic at Disneyland is not to go with kids. <laughs> Parents, go alone. So most of the rides we were queuing 
without kids, obviously. Mm. But this one, there was no single rider option. So we were in a quite a long queue. Long old queue with a lot of families. With a lot of families. And it was our first introduction to the kids. Yeah. And they were very annoying, I will say. A little bit annoying. And they, we were queuing up this, this young girl. I didn't feel bad for her. She was scared. Mm-hmm. All right. She was scared of the yeah. idea of a haunted mansion, which fair enough. Yeah. You know, she's a child. It's a haunted mansion. Checks out. So her dad, they were kind of all screaming. All the kids, I think they had three kids, and he got the ride up on YouTube yeah. and was like, "Look, it's it's going to be fine." Because it's not a scary ride. It's a very gentle ride. But if you're you a, tell her, well, <laughs> and she was screaming, and it was really funny because you could tell the parents just really wanted to go on the ride. So they were like, "Yeah, I'll be fine. You'll be all right. Look, look." And we we're watching the whole kind of YouTube video on on how the ride would be. Now she was like, "Okay, I think I can do it," and I was like, <laughs> "Sweet." We then got in room one. Yeah, it's the, before you get on the ride, you do this sort of room where they add a bit of atmosphere and the lights go out and there's a bit of thunder and lightning. Trickery. She is terrified immediately, just starts screaming it, immediately. It goes dark and we just hear like, ah! like <laughs> full, full lungs, full screaming. She is terrified. And then you, Han- <laughs> Hannah starts screaming as well, going, ah! and then Hannah keeps screaming and then turning to me and going, scare them more. <laughs> Ah, scare them more as in like if we scream it will make the kids more scared I was like what are you talking about but you I'd just lost kept, it and then you got so addicted to saying that you just kept turning me going scare them more. more it's really fun to say scare no kids, more no kids were harmed no they were fine they were fine but scare it was funny more. because there was all screams coming from the over, overhead like yeah. you know and I was like let's amp it up a bit scare them more scare them more that wasn't the give them a show that. That was the only incident you had with the child in, Disney, in Disneyland. Disneyland. This this little kid, right, <laughs> <laughs> on the way in. Bear this in mind. You we were queuing to get in the park. Bear in mind, it's, it is my 30th birthday on that day. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm queuing. I'm happy. It's a dream day. It's a dream setup. This little kid, the problem is, right, if you've got a, a parent who won't wait in the queue, the kid then learns that they don't mm. have to wait in the queue, all right? Yeah. Generational rudeness. Generational rudeness. So this little kid, they're like... We're, we're, we're queuing to get into the park. Yeah. All you have to do is scan like one QR code once to get in the park. Ah. And the amount of people who just cannot physically do that. They could not. They can't do it at Disney, uh, Disneyland. They can't do it at the airport. It's actually crazy how much people can't do that. <laughs> yeah. And so we were in this queue for ages. Yeah. And, and then they, it looked like they were opening up the queue next to us. So wonderful. So whoever's at the front there will kind of, will tail off. This kid decides, no. <laughs> He's going to like run forward and like with his family, they will try and like, overtake us yeah this family that's behind us they he's like come on guys come on like let's skip the queue in french but we yeah. can understand skip the queue <laughs> <laughs> um and, and then they start yeah they start trying to overtake us and you you weren't having that i d- i did a little thumbs down she thumbs downed <laughs> a child at disneyland disneyland Disney i did a little thumbs down because that's a universal language it's the funniest thing you could do <laughs> to someone <laughs> Because they, I've seen stuff where um, people get like cut up in traffic or whatever. I've seen tweets where people say, instead of giving someone the finger, always give them a thumbs down. It makes people so much more mad. I gave I this little true. family a little thumbs down. And, and to be fair, the park worker was like, absolutely not. Get get back where you were. You yeah. can't run forward. Um, but my little thumbs down, I felt... I was like, we've been here for five minutes and you're feuding with a child. <laughs> and then we got in and we saw Mickey and Minnie in their little holiday outfits. And I was, All was thumbs up. <laughs> A <laughs> okay, but on the trip we also we had a big old eve out for um, New Year's Eve. Yes, it's like what was that night? Yeah. New Year's Eve. Yeah. Uh, the the event started at ten in the mm. PM. Yeah. And we were like, what are we going to do before? Because yeah, we're usually in bed by ten PM. I was like, what are we what are we going to do if the party starts at ten? Uh, so we went for dinner. Spoiler: yeah. that was what happened. Um, good night. It was a great night. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. Oh, well, I know what you're building up to. Are you building up to what happened shortly after midnight? Well. Because we were in this, this so, club. So set the scene. The the um, countdown was very lackluster. We kind of missed it. And then everyone was like, ah, it's, oh, it's 12.01. Happy New Year. Yeah, they had these drag queens there. And they had this microphone that was like so bad, we couldn't tell if they were speaking English or French. That yeah. Was like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and then... We were all standing there. They didn't do any countdown. And then you just looked at your phone and was like, oh, I, it's New Year's. And everyone around us was like, oh, yay. Happy New Year. I was bon like, nanny. I guess we can. Bonani. Bonani. Oh. So anyway, party goes on. It's now past 12. 
it, it's fun. We're enjoying it. I go off. I'm like, I need a wee. We'd found some friends. We'd made some pals. I go for a wee. I come back because this is like a pr- an indoor kind of members club. Mm-hmm. It's like a cool-ish party. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was pretty cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool. We were there. Yeah. Um, we were bringing it down, but it was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> the level was above us, but yeah. we were also there. So... So I'm coming back from the loo and I see this girl smoking indoors and I think, well, okay. she's going to get kicked out. I'm like, that's against the rules. I was like, you can't smoke indoors, you know, since 2001. Yeah. How long's it been? I was like, what are you doing? So she's smoking indoors and obviously like this is a posh place. I'm like, the furniture, like everything's velvet. I'm like, she'll be out within 10 minutes. Then... Yeah, then a man <laughs> walks up to us who works there and he had a, literally a silver platter yeah. of just loose cigarettes. Yeah. Just like a mountain of loose cigarettes. And he was like, cigarette? <laughs> and people would just take... I was like, what French bylaws are there? I mean, where you can smoke indoors on New, on New Year's. We were amazed. We were amazed. <laughs> That's the I highlight like, of our year. <laughs> I was so annoyed that I don't smoke because I was like, what a jackpot. I would have been filling my pockets. Well, you did insist. Well, we both took one. We, were just kinda, <laughs> well, we don't smoke, so no, we're just kind of holding it. Sorry, this is typical us. We both took a cigarette and then we went outside. To We went outside the front of this members club because we didn't want to get in trouble. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And then we had like two puff seats. And I was like, I'm out. And I was like, I feel a bit sick now. I don't really want to do more of this cigarette. <laughs> but can you explain the woman who left that party versus the woman who arrived back at the hotel? Oh, I forgot about this. Yeah, we. I think it was this. It was the cigarette. Don't smoke, kids. Smoking's bad for you. Because you had one puff of that cigarette and, you, and we were walking back. And I we, know, at the party, I was a delight. I don't want to... Yeah, you're fine, yeah. I don't want to like... <laughs> I was. You were, you were social, you were, you know, life of the party, having a great time. I don't feel like we drank sometimes... that much. I mean, it was New Year's, but... No. Some, you know, sometimes you're, like, not on form, a bit tired. Like, we were talking to these guys about Taylor Swift. Like, I, I think I was, like, quite you were in the with pocket. it. Yeah. At the party. Yeah, and then we had a short stroll. Yeah, we walked 10 home. minutes, 15 minutes back to the hotel. The woman who arrived back at the hotel. <laughs> My God. I don't know what happened. New Year's. <laughs> what happened? I don't know. It was like all, honestly, it, it was that one puff of that cigarette because it, everything went downhill. I smashed a glass. You did? I forgot about the I glass. I took my skirt off and I like threw it on the back of the wardrobe. It like went behind the wardrobe. I was yeah. like, yeah. I was just. <laughs> don't do that anymore. <laughs> you were like, why are you so drunk? I was like, I don't know. I was like. <laughs> Rather than that cigarette. <laughs> Two seconds earlier, I'd be like, and yeah, the political blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and the it... political blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then uh, it all went downhill. You did. Honestly, don't smoke. Don't smoke. Although if it's free, you know what I mean? Like, you're not going to turn it down. Where was it that we arrived? Was it one of our trips recently that we got to an airport or a train station and there was a sign for Jeremy Ham? Oh my god, yes. Oh my god, yes. We got back from, it's when we got back from Paris. It was New Year's Day. We decided to get the Euro decided to get the Eurostar home on New Year's Day. Very hungover. At like midday. Why did we do that? Yeah. Everyone well, first of all, everyone in the world was on that train because everyone had the same idea and everyone was, was a, hungover. It was a popular day to travel. Oh god, that was a difficult journey. Yeah. It was a very tender journey. My the two takeaways from this podcast. Go to Disneyland Disney without Lond. kids. Yeah. <laughs> and don't travel on New Year's Day. Yeah, that was crazy. That sounds like some sort of like ancient wisdom. Never travel on New Year's Day. <laughs> or your your harvest will go bad. <laughs> there was um I don't know if this is interesting. Do you remember that family that was having like just such a nightmare on the Eurostar? Like the kid had like a ice cream that spilled everywhere all over the dad. Uh, the mum didn't know how to close the buggy. So she was blocking the whole train. They were having a bit of a shocker. They were being really annoying, but it was one of those things where they were being so annoying that you then started feeling sorry for them because you were like, it's annoying for me, but imagine being you. You are having such a shocker. That guy was just covered in yogurt. He was. Yogurt everywhere. But we arrived back. We arrived back in New Year's Day. New Year's Day. And they've got one of those guys holding up a sign, (laughs) which is odd in St. Pancras. I guess it could be a taxi. And it just said... (laughs) (laughs) Sorry Sorry if this is your name. Sorry to that man. Sorry to that ham. (laughs) But it said Jeremy Ham. And I, I was like that. Was... No, we both turned to each other and just burst out laughing. We did. We're like, thank God we're married. We... That was like such a... I saw it and I I actually saw it and I laughed to myself and I thought, I'm not even going to say something to Hannah because she'll think that's dumb. And then you turned to me and we just went, Jeremy Ham. <laughs> Because Jeremy Ham is like a pig in a top hat. Do you know what I mean? Jeremy Ham is like a... Jeremy Ham. Hello, I'm Jeremy Ham. We just loved that. 
fact, I'm like an animal farm character. Shout out to Jeremy Ham. I hope he's doing well. If I could just circle back. Because <laughs> we forgot one thing that... Vis-a-vis -vis previous conversation. Uh -huh. Hi, I just want to circle back on that. Uh, I just want to jump off your previous point. When we were going into the, the New Year's party, there was like a, you know, it was Paris. There was a French person on the door. And we had like put our names down. Yeah. And I was like, hello. He's like, bonsoir, what is your name? And I was like, I'm Benedict. And he was like, huh? <laughs> They'd never heard of your name. No, they were like, it was like, huh? And I went, Benedict. He went, he didn't even go like, what? He was like, like his brain was, he's like, huh? And I, and I was like, Benedict. He was like, not, he was like, not to your last name. What is your first name? I was like, my first name is Benedict. <laughs> and he was like, oh, he was like, look at the papers. Like, oh, God. Because do you know the name Benoit? No. Benoit is a French name and Benoit is Benedict in French. Ah. So Daniel Craig in Knives Out, Benoit Blanc. It's technically Benedict Blanc, hey. which is quite fun for me as a James Bond fan. So they don't have Benedict as a name at all. They only have Benoit. Okay. But surely he had heard of Benedict Cumberbatch from well, the Marvel movies. Well, he had not. Um, it's good that it's not offensive to do French accents. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. These <laughs> clips will resurface. Yeah, one day when Macron takes over. Um, but yeah, he had no idea. Hannah, he was like, we okay. But then our names also weren't on the list our anyway. Our names weren't on the list, so... But then they, they let us in. They let us They were in. like, they've dressed up, let them in. Wasn't that exclusive? <laughs> scare them more. And then, scare them more. And then the man behind us was like, J Jeremy Ham. I think my name will be on the list. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the name's Ham. <laughs> and he was like, right this way. <laughs> yes. I'm part of the Ham fortune. We discovered pork. <laughs> Something's come to light recently uh, mm. that, needs, <laughs> that needs addressing. Mm. So I was on your phone the other day. And just she's just a friend. <laughs> and she's keeping around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was on your phone the other day. Yeah, and more. <laughs> <laughs> I was on your phone the other day, and I was on Instagram, for, on your Instagram for some reason, and I saw a little post come up mm. from Sydney Sweeney, and I was like, oh, Instagram's doing that thing where it like promotes people that you don't follow, and it's like I hate when it does that. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. And I was like, ah, oh, that's so weird. Like, and annoying, like, that they really are trying to, like, plug people these yeah. days. And then I see, I'm looking, and I'm like, oh, hang on. Benedict follows Sydney Sweeney. And I was like, no. big fan of her work, are you? It's just, it's just crazy that they're so insistent that they actually will go in and follow people from your... Yeah, uh, is that right? Against your will now. I was like, didn't realise... So invasive. And Mark Zuckerberg, if you're watching... Stay out of my business. I didn't realise you were such a big Sydney Swinney fan. She's a very talented young lady. <laughs> so then I uh, took this knowledge away and I kind of told this tale mm -hmm. at work, right? I'm not aware of this. <laughs> yeah, it got bigger. It got this. This went further than just us. So I was like saying, I was like, yeah, Benedict follows Sydney Sweeney on Instagram. I was like, I just think it's funny. <laughs> no, I was she like, she was in my favourite movie of all time, huh? Madam Web. Her web connects us all. <laughs> so I um, I told people at work, I was like, Benedict, he, he follows Sydney Sweeney. I was like, it's just funny, isn't it? Um, <laughs> I just think it's funny. And they were like, right, we're going to check if our partners follow Sydney Sweeney. So then it got bigger and people were like checking, do, do they follow? We were looking on the follow list. My friend from work then took it to her friendship group. And <laughs> one of her friends found that her partner her boyfriend followed Sydney Sweeney on both his personal account and his work account <laughs> he was an optician and he was following her he just wants to see her even better yeah he was like she's got she she wears glasses and she's good for client client services you know that's so funny that he's like no matter what account I'm logged into I need <laughs> to be keeping up with Sydney Sweeney with the updates with the updates I mean look She's beautiful. I, I hadn't noticed. I get it. I hadn't noticed. I get it. She's a very good actor, good in White Lotus. Uh, She's very good in Madam Web. Yes. You know, you haven't seen Madam Web, you wouldn't understand. Her web connects us all. <laughs> <laughs> Scare them more. Scare them more. So yeah, a little, uh, a little thing to take, take with you. Well, if I discovered that you followed one of those fashionable hunks of the moment, a Zac Efron, <laughs> a, a David Byrne, you know, these, these people that kids like. Uh-huh. Prince, I wouldn't be insulted. I'd be like, fair enough. Letter. Do you, do you you don't follow anyone who's easy on the eye apart from me? Um, I, what like thirst follow people? I wouldn't say a thirst. Yeah, but you know, like it's a visual medium. Instagram. Yeah, I don't think I do. Okay. Well, thank you for putting me on blast about that. <laughs> I didn't know we were going to talk about that. 
I'm gonna go on your. I'm gonna go on your work account and start following members of that um, Irish um, strip group. <laughs> what are they called? The the Pleasure Boys or the something. Pleasure Boys. That was wild. It's one of the most wild things I've ever seen. I've never seen anything like it, and I love the. Do you want to give a bit of? Context? Yes, I was gonna say for, for those who are not aware, this was um, sort of like a magic mic, but like a but like a <laughs> X rated. X rated. Much sort of lower budget, much more regional. It was in Dublin. Mm. Um, what would be the? What would be the? Was it in Dublin? I think it was in Dublin. This. I don't know if they are Dublin based, but I'm pretty sure the incident took place in Dublin. And you know, Magic Mike. I've not been myself, but I. Uh, I'm. I, I, yeah, it's sort of a striptease type thing. But I'm pretty sure they never get fully naked. No, they never get fully naked, and they. And I think like they might give you a kind of dance, but they're not. They don't touch you. They're not properly touching you with any part of them. Yes. The the Pleasure Boys. The Pleasure Boys, on the other hand. The Pleasure Boys is quite different. It's a very X-rated show where you're. But is it is it supposed to be that, or do you think they just went a bit off the rails? Because we're talking. Dong on everywhere. <laughs> it it got. They said it. They said yes. In some instances, they thought it was taken too far that night. There was a specific night. A lot of videos came out, photos, and but they their reaction to this was instead of like this is this is bad. They were like, in future, we won't let cameras be allowed in. I love that that was their first reaction. They were like, clearly we've made a mistake letting people record this. <laughs> we can't keep getting away with it that way. If you were at a um, what's it called? Hindu, mm. um, or a gay stag do, and uh, you were taken to a show like that, and the the wangs are flying. What would you just leave? <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> I would. No, but seriously, I'd I, leave. I think that would be <laughs> bizarre. Uh, yeah, I would not want to be up on stage. But there were so many people up on stage at once and so much happening in these videos. I can't quite put it to you wh- how much was going on. It was a lot. But I want to thank the Pleasure Boys for sponsoring today's episode. And I do think that it's a great brand partnership we're able to build. <laughs> yeah. I turned to you the other day and I said I would like five compliments that you've never given me. Oh, my God. This was, this was crazy. I said... I'd like five compliments about myself yeah. that you've never given me before. So like nothing, none of this generic shit. I want like, <laughs> I want like specific compliments about myself. You know, that you know, in these cards you write me, you say, you know, I love you more every day. It's like, well, what? I, I give Hannah a card every day. <laughs> well, I'm like, what more do you love about me than, that you didn't love yesterday? But you, so we're we're lying in bed. And I'm saying, well, can we just talk about this briefly? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> you you stay in bed for a sec. Do you find this when I'm writing you a card for like Valentine's Day or our anniversary or whatever? I obviously enjoy doing that. I love love. But do you find that you're like, I am pretty much still still a fan. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, do you do you search for more synonyms that you haven't used previously to be like, well, to write still love you? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? When I'm talking, when you're when writing, writing me a you, card, yeah, no, because it just comes easy because I do really love you, and I, my love does grow day on day, day by day. Yes, I know. Day. I'm not saying the love isn't there. I'm just saying like you don't want to just say the same. I I've run into a problem that I keep. There's only so many cards that have Siamese cats on them, and we have a Siamese cat, so I have actually ended up buying you the same card. Well, no, you you're buying me Siamese adjacent. I'm like, who's this cat? And yeah. it's like a <laughs> like a British short hair, and you're like, kind of looks like Suki. Yeah, because there's no there's weirdly for Siamese cats being quite a, like a well known type of cat. Very little merch. There's a gap in the market for you there. Market dragons. Sell them more. Sell them more. (laughs) Siamese more. Anyway, we were in bed when you hit me with this just absolute Venus flytrap of a question. I was feeling sad, and I wanted to be, I wanted comfort from my husband in the form of what is it? What's five things that you've never told me that you love about me? And he's like, oh god, you're like you start, and you're like, oh god, that's going to be really hard. It's like great. Because right. I give you lots of compliments. The, 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 the loaded element is so actually so evilly smart of you, which is it has to be something I've never said before. So I can't like compliment your appearance because I've done that. I can't compliment like your sense of humor or your smile or any of the common stuff. So I was really having to, and I was pl- plucking stuff out and you were like, you've said that, you've said that. You were <laughs> you go, swatting them I, down. I really love, you know, your hair and stuff like that. It's like, I think you've said that. <laughs> <laughs> right. So then, so we're lying there, I'm in bed. I'm, and then he goes, I really love how dedicated you are when you well, I work sp- from home, like watching you do your work when I'm at home. Imagine it's pitch black and that just, that your little voice like, oh, I was like, 
It took me about, that's, and the, yeah, 20 minutes took later. about 10 minutes to come up with that. Because, well, I've said everything. So I had to come up with something I've never said before. And I was like, when I, when I overhear you doing calls at work, <laughs> you really sound like you know what you're talking about. It's a compliment. And you couldn't, I, Una reversed it to you. You couldn't think of anything I definitely did. What was the compliment? I, uh, Give me one right now. <laughs> um, I love today when we were walking to this podcast r record and mm -hmm. you were like, just so happy. <laughs> well, you're using time sensitivity to get around this. And, and All right, I love the way you look right now <laughs> in this moment. There you go, I've never given you that compliment before. <laughs> All right. right here in this shipping container. <laughs> you see, you know, you know who doesn't demand these things of me? Sydney Sweeney. Mm -hmm. It's a much simpler relationship. One the eyes, is it? <laughs> One, the eyes, the is eyes. it? Is it? She's got great pair of glasses, is she? That's that's <laughs> disgusting. That's horrible. No, she's beautiful and wonderful, and she actually seems really nice. I think we should briefly talk about the Wonka thing. I think we need to address it because it's. You know, as you may know, I have a show called Scroll Deep and we actually today at the time of recording have done a whole episode about the, the Glasgow Willy Wonka experience. So Go there. If, if you want the full rundown on every single thing that happened, head over to Scroll Deep on, on YouTube or TikTok. Um, promo within promo. But probably one of the best things that's ever happened. It's so great. On the on the bus over here, I was like, do you think they'll make a Netflix doc about it? There's not enough for me. I'm craving footage and photos. Mm, mm. Like it's been given to us in dribs and drabs, which is almost better. Like, I, was gonna say, I think that's part of the reason it's been so successful. The magic. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's why it's gone so viral, because every day we get one new photo of the unknown. <laughs> <laughs> it's the unknown. What's this? It's the unknown. <laughs> ah! And then you get the chart. So... Okay, if you're not familiar, long story short, these these people put on this extremely low budget, Willy Wonka inspired, non copyright friendly experience in Glasgow, which you just don't get anymore. Like everything's got like a certain standard mm. that it's really rare that you go to something or you know it, that things are allowed to be put on. That and they're just, just a really crap, and there's just like, and we were saying like for something like that. Props are so expensive. To hire a prop for like two days or whatever, like, yeah. and to fill space actually with props is so expensive. It, it's a it's a big job. Well, also, I think the first red flag was the tickets were thirty five quid, yeah. which is a lot of money, but actually is kind of a good price mm. considering that, like, I, you know, we know parents who spent like two hundred quid to see Santa. Disney money, money well spent, I would say. Disneyland was Disneyland. slightly more expensive than 35 quid. Disneyland was expensive. But there was lots of props. Yeah, exactly. They had at least two props. Mm. Um, but my favourite part is that they, let a they wrote a script using AI mm. uh, and then gave it to these poor actors who had to learn it. And so part of the story of the experience is that there's a character called The Unknown who's an evil chocolatier that lives in the walls and it's just a person in a black cloak and a mask. And there's this clip of Willy Wonka going, oh, what's this? It's the unknown. And then the, all the kids start screaming immediately and then it just cuts out. It's a, it is a perfect five seconds of footage, isn't it? Yeah, you, your tweet that you did, which said like about dressing up as the unknown for Halloween, Halloween is so good. I Thank wish you. you hadn't tweeted that and I wish we'd saved that because that I think they're well, like- We could still do it. No one will remember. By the it. terrible Wonka experience it's going to be, uh, it's going to, I'm calling it now. It's going to be the Halloween costume of 2024. Absolutely. My tweet, for the, for those who don't know, is just me. It's like, Halloween 2024. And it's like, what are you? It's like, I'm the unknown from that Wonka thing seven months ago. Like, the longer it ages, the better it is as a costume. Mm. I also like that that guy, I feel like he sounds a little bit like Keir Starmer when he's like, what's this? It's the unknown. It's the Mr. Speaker, it's the unknown. <laughs> I went to an escape room where... Uh, it was like me and the gang and we were trying to obviously escape the room mm -hmm. uh, and um, it everything like malfunctioned and went wrong at the end and we like kind of had opened this box and we were like oh if we like and then this guy just came in and he was like you did it <laughs> <laughs> and I remember being like <laughs> <laughs> he was like, you escaped. Because I think the room was like, the door was supposed to open and everything would turn green, like, you yeah. know, the, that we'd done it. But we were like, oh, everything's kind of like, the key was jammed, but we'd solved the clue. And it was just like, you did it. <laughs> yeah, <I love it. laughs> he escaped the room. We were like, the door. Yeah, technically done. I would love to be 
working at an escape room watching people it must mm. be so annoying especially when when you know the clues are there like do you remember when we did that weird cat one with um my mum and it was dad surprisingly hard but like there was like there was like a board or something that was like dates related to the cat that we just completely missed and if i was like in the room i'd have been like look at the board i i find escape rooms tricky because i think it's two things for me one it's like you don't know what's part of the room and what isn't. Mm. And often most of it isn't. Mm. And then also, I think I always overestimate the room. I'm always like, oh, if you pull a book, a door will open. And you do. And actually, most of the time, it's like find a code, put it into a padlock, then find a different code, put it into a different padlock. It's just number-based padlocks mostly. But I'm always there going like, maybe a passage will open. Does this relate to our friend made his own um, like murder mystery? My good friend, Adam. He made his own murder mystery. In his house. In his house. And obviously he'd like put clues around and there was a poster, <laughs> like a huge like manufactured poster on the wall. For like a band, a famous band. For a famous band. And Benedict was like, is this a clue? <laughs> and like, or is all the writing, does it relate to something? And I'm like, no. That's and Ad Adam kept having to be like, no. Like he was really trying to stay out of it. But I kept being like, is it in the potted plant? He was like, no, leave my plants alone. You were too much. I was too much. Again, I was too lost in the source of like anything could be a clue. And he was like, no, this one thing is a clue. You're like, maybe Adam's room now has a secret tunnel in yeah. it. It's like, no. One day I'll build my true escape room. Hmm. Well, that brings us to the end of this episode of Talk of the Townsends. Thank you so much for watching and or listening. We'll be back hopefully like next week or something. Who knows what the schedule will be. But make sure to follow on, I don't know, everywhere. TikTok, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. It's everywhere now, isn't it? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Over and <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and Hannah, do you want to take us out with our oh, famous no. catchphrase? Scare em more. Scare em no, more. No, I looked down the wrong camera. Wait, is it this one? Scare em more. Scare em more. <laughs> nice. <laughs>